Hey guys, Timothy Roberts here. In this video, we are going to start a new series I'm entitling Symbol Specs. And in it, I'm gonna dive super deep into one element of a symbol and how different ways of crafting that element or manipulating that el element, how that affects the outcome of the sound. So in this part, part one, we're gonna dive into the bell of a symbol, how the shape of it, the specs of it, the setup of it, how all of that affects the overall sound. So there are two types of bells that we're going to talk about, and then within that there's going to be more uh, options. Uh, but the two types are hand-formed bells and pressed bells. Hand-formed bells uh, are manufactured using a totally flat piece of bronze where basically I'll take a flat piece of bronze like that, I'll find the center point, I'll mark out the, the diameter of my bell, and then I hammer it into shape. Usually it takes a few hundred hammer strikes, if not more, to get the shape that I want. And that gives me, as you can imagine, the most freedom and control over the bell shape and the kind of sound that I'm going for if that's... Uh, if the hand-formed bell sound is what I want. Hand-formed bells have a little bit more character and nuance to them. They tend to be a little bit more integrated, which means that when you hit the bell, you hear the body of the cymbal resonate as well, as opposed to separated, where you'll hit the bell and it feels pretty cutting and cr clear, and it's not really activating the rest of the cymbal. So hand-formed bells tend to be more integrated, they tend to be a little bit more funky, they have more vibe and character to them, and that's mainly because they're really imperfect. If you were to zoom in with a microscope and see is the curvature exactly the, the you know perfect all the way around, it's gonna be a hard no on that because it's all done by eye. Like There are some tools that you can use, but I typically just do it all by eye. I'm hammering the, the underside to kind of build out the shape and then I'll flip it over and kind of look at it from a side view. And that's how I form the shape. So it's, it's, it's definitely imperfect. It has, you know, high spots and low spots. You get different sounds depending on where you hit on the bell, especially. Uh, and I really enjoy making hand formed bells and they're essential for me in my process. Cause I make a, a, a series called the half flat series where I'm making smaller bells than typical to accentuate stick definition and also give a lower volume for uh, certain musical applications. Now, the second type of bell is, is called a pressed bell, and this is where they use a die and they press a predetermined shape into the bronze so that when you get that blank, it's already got a perfect bell in it with the hole and everything. Now, these press bells have much more clarity in general. They have much more clarity. They have much more cuts. And the transition from the bell to the body is much sharper. So you get more of a hard uh, direction change as opposed to it being a little bit more smooth. Uh, and that also helps with what I was speaking about earlier with the separated sound as opposed to an integrated sound. So pressed bells are great for when you need uh, to create a symbol or get a symbol that's that's much more clear and cutting and versatile like if you need a bell that's going to really cut through and you you want to hit the bell and, and feel like it's really solid and it's not hollow it's not really activating the rest of the symbol then a press bell is great for that so that is the uh broad strokes thing with hand formed and pressed let's dive into some details about it and i'm going to show you examples of everything that i'm talking about all right, so in this first set here, we have all the hand-formed bells. I'll start on my left here. We have a very, very small half-flat bell in a cymbal. This is a 20-inch, and these very, very tiny bells are meant to be as close to a flat ride as possible without having no crashability and no volume to the sustain. So these really, really small bells do a great job of kind of riding that line, giving you a cymbal you can lay into and get somewhat of a crash but you still have a really nice flat ride quality to the stick definition. In my main left position, I have a 20 inch with a pretty standard sized hand formed bell that I, that I made to be a little bit cockeyed on purpose. So the goal with this symbol is to emulate uh, a particular player's old K uh, ride symbol. 
And so it's got a very odd shape. It's actually got kind of an odd sound, to be honest, but it's still a work in progress. But it's a great example of a, of a, of a bell, a hand-formed bell that's meant to be a little bit off on purpose uh, to create a certain vibe. In my main position here, I have a 24-inch with a standard uh, dimension, standard circumference hand-formed bell. This one has a lot lower of a height, though. So the, the height of the bell is a huge factor. And for me, I rarely ever like tall uh, bells. If I, like, if I want a big bell, I want it typically to be either standard or on the low side of standard because those lower height bells give you a more mellow and warm sound, uh, whereas the really tall and almost conical sort of triangular shaped bells tend to be really chimey and bright and a little bit aggressive to the ear. So this one's got a lower shape, it's, uh, meant to be more of a mellow sounding cymbal. Then on my far right here, I have another half flat. This one has more of the standard size half flat. So it's a little bit bigger than this one on the left. Uh, and this symbol is also very low, pretty flat. And it, this symbol is a great low volume symbol. So this kind of bell and the symbol is great to give you something that you can just really lay into it. It's not ever going to get overbearing or out of hand. Uh, this is great for uh, environments where you don't want a symbol that's too loud. So uh, if you play in cafes or restaurants and you know, the, the drum volume is already kind of overbearing, then these cymbals are amazing. They're also great for church music. If you need something that's like a big crash ride that you want to lay into, that's not going to get out of hand. So let's check out how these cymbals sound. All right, now for some pressed bells. So uh, you'll notice pretty quickly that these cymbals have more clarity, more cut, and more, you can imagine them having a bit more versatility to them as well. So over here on my left, I have a fully unlathed uh, cymbal that has a pressed bell that's taller. So this cymbal and the cymbal in the main position have the same shape pressed bell, which is a bit more... Uh, how to say it like a little bit more like it's a little bit taller in the center it's not flat so it's got a little bit more height in the center and it's a little bit more triangular uh, and this is kind of bordering on that thing I was saying about the really tall bells being a little bit too much for me but these ones fall within a range where I can really work with them and pull some interesting sounds out so this one on the left is one where it's a 20 inch that's really heavy I haven't laid it at all so it's around 2400 grams and it's got that taller bell so this one is going to be the most piercing the most pure 
the loudest of all of them. Then in my main left position, I have a standard press bell that's a bit more rounded and a little bit lower. And this one is a thin cymbal. So this is one where I've taken the weight down to a point where the bell is now a bit more integrated. It's not near as separated as this one especially and some of the others. It's a little bit more integrated and you hit it and you hear the body of the cymbal activate. Uh, so this would be an example of a more integrated press bell. In the main position here, we have another one of the same bell shape as the one on the left. And this one has been lathed in a particular way. This is kind of a uh, Nefertiti ride clone. It's got the same shape. It's got a very similar weight to it. So uh, I'll definitely be interested to hear what you guys think about this one. But um, this bell also has lathing. It's been hammered and it's got some heavier uh, pin lathing on the very, at the very last, very last step with some heavier pin lathing on there, uh, which that's a topic for another video. And then in the far right position, we have a pressed bell that's a little bit smaller than this one. So it's pressed, it's a little bit, it's rounded, but it's a little bit lower than the, than the one in the main position. So let's check out these sounds and then you guys can let me know what you think. All right, guys, that's the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below about the different types of symbols that I demoed. I could have probably talked about this, this concept for two hours, but I uh, don't want to bore you with all that detail. So it's a little bit of a flyover view of different bells and what they do to the sound of the symbol. I want to know what you guys heard. Please drop a comment below and let me know what did you gravitate towards? Did you like the hand form bells? Did you like the press bells? And which one of each style was your favorite? Uh, this can be a very insightful way to dive into symbols and find the kind of sound that uh, will, will be your sound. It's a lot of fun. So please like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want notifications, and keep an eye out for the next video in this series where I'm going to dive into the profile of the symbol, which is the shape of the curvature. So from the base of the bell to the edge, how does it curve? Where does it curve? All of that fun stuff. It's one of my favorite parts of symbol design, and we're going to dive into it next time. Until then, I'm Timothy Roberts. Thanks for watching.